guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my top 20 favorite seashells I own. Let's get straight into the video. If you guys are new to the channel, this right here is my entire seashell collection. Now, this shelf here, all of these shells were found by me or empty. Same with this shelf here and the one below. Even a couple down here, the textile cone shells. And a bunch of miscellaneous shells up the top here. I'm not going to be looking at the entire shell collection today, but if you do want to take a look at the entire collection in a video of its own, I'll link it down below in the description so you can take your time and really take a look through all of these shells here because it's pretty impressive. You definitely want to check that out, but after you've watched this video, let's get straight into it. So as you guys can tell, there are hundreds, if not thousands of seashells here. Let's take a look at my favorite one of all time. What are we thinking? It's got to be that giant Nautilus, or it's got to be this giant Murex pecten, or it's got to be this giant sea urchin shell. Even though they are absolutely incredible, you'd be wrong. Let me show you my favorite shell on earth. My favorite seashell of all time would be right here, the Limacina cowrie, or the Cyprae Limacina. As you can tell, I have three gem condition ones there. And remember what I said earlier, this shelf, this shelf, and this shelf here are filled with shells that I personally found. So I've personally found all three of those Limacinas. This here was my first one about three years ago. This was my second one about a year and a half ago. And this was my most recent one about six, seven months ago. And they are all in gem condition. The Limousini you see on the left of the screen is about as big as they get. Maybe thinking, but wait, there's nine others that look just like the Limousina Cowry right below it. So how do you only have three? Well, these are completely different. These are called Cyprae Staphylae. Yeah, they look a heck of a lot like them, especially this blue one here. But they're not. They're a completely different shell, which is really cool. I'll tell you guys a bit of information about the Limacina cowries here. I've been to my beach. Uh, I actually found all three of those at the same beach here at... Uh, Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia, all three at the same beach. And I've been shelling for over three and a half years now, give or take a couple of months. And over that three and a half years, I've gone shelling at least five times a week. So that gives us about 900 tries to find one of these cowrie shells here. And I've only ever found three. So that's about a one in a thousand chance to find one of those shells. That's pretty crazy, right? That just shows you guys how rare these actually are, especially in gem condition, which they are. Let's move on to my second favorite seashell ever. Here we have the Murex pecten. I've had this particular shell for about two years now. It has been my second favorite shell ever because it is actually the spikiest shell on the planet. It doesn't it look incredible. This thing is huge. Uh, it measures 134 millimeters in length and it's, uh, I'd say, F condition. It has a couple of broken spines around, but it is mega, excellent color, and it is just a, such a beautiful shell. It's just incredible. Murex pectin. Let's move on to number three. Number three would be my giant queen conch shell. I received this one for my 20th birthday last year from my girlfriend Imogen. These are extremely hard to get in Australia because you cannot import this shell into the country at all. There are mountains and mountains of these all over Florida and the Bahamas. 
and it is extremely hard to get them here because you cannot import them. So all of the queen conches that are still in Australia come from very old collections. That's why they're so hard to get because there's a limited uh, supply of these. And the main reason I love this shell so much is because of that pink inside. I think it's just incredible. It's such a symbolic shell. It's just incredible. And this one is absolutely awesome condition. As you can see, I have a sub-adult right there and a juvenile. Very, very cool. And this one was the absolute king of uh, queen conches. I love it. It is just incredible. It's an awesome size, awesome color. It's awesome. Four on my top shell list would definitely be my giant Nautilus Pompilius. This one is huge. Let me tell you guys a bit about it. Again, just like the queen conch shells, it is illegal to import or even export these Nautilus shells in or out of the country which also is why they are so hard to get here in Australia. And in Australia, you cannot legally sell the seashells you find. So if you find them, they're yours forever. This shell is definitely one of my dream finds one day. I've only ever found a piece of Nautilus, and that is right down here. As you can see, a Nautilus core. That's as close as I've gotten to one. So hopefully I can find one one day. That is definitely in my top uh, three of like the most dreamed of finds for me. But they're just incredible. I love them. As you can see, I've got this giant tiger here and that giant uh, pearlized Nautilus right there. I love the Nautilus. Number five would obviously have to be the textile cone shells. These are the ones that I've found in my life. As you can see, I've got quite a good amount here, but let me show you guys my top three of these textile cones. My little top finds level here, we have three textile cone shells. Let me show you this one first. This was one of my first ever textile cone shell finds. This one is incredible condition. Really nice size, really nice color. That was one of my first, actually my first big one I ever found. Pretty incredible. Down here we have another one here. Awesome condition, really, really nice tip on it. Really dark uh, colorway, especially on the inside there. Really nice lip. Very awesome. Remember this whole level here. Whenever I show you guys a shell from this level, I found it myself. And then, oh bunch of sand falling out we have another textile here as you can see it still has some rocks and such inside the lip which is pretty cool i always love the textile cones with the pink tip and this one was a little bit blue which is very cool i am the textile cone king i love finding textiles i love educating people about textiles because they're incredibly dangerous. If you guys are new to the channel, if this is your first episode that you are watching, let me tell you guys a little bit about textile cones. These ones, when they are live, when they have the original live animal inside it, the uh, cone snail, they are incredibly dangerous. You do not want to get stung by a live one of these because you will most likely uh, die within an hour. Everyone reacts differently to toxins. So if you receive a sting from them, you'll pass away within 10 minutes to an hour uh, and there is no treatment because the sting of a textile cone shell holds over 500 different neurotoxins inside of its stinger. So that is impossible to find a uh, antitoxin to it. So yeah, that's... A little bit of interesting thing, so never ever touch a live textile cone shell. Not even with gloves, I would not recommend it. You have seen me do it in some videos, 
but I have quite a bit of knowledge about them and I know what I'm doing with them. So be careful guys. All right, let's move on to number six. Number six would be my Zoila Friendi Friendi. Now this is indeed a carry shell, but it is the next level of carry shells. Most of these are found in Western Australia, including this Friendi here actually. Uh, from depths about 15 to 20 meters or actually more uh, deep below and they usually live on things like uh, big sea sponge, uh, coral plates, actually a lot of them underneath that sort of thing which is really interesting but yeah these are extremely hard to find uh, while snorkeling or you can't actually snorkel that far down they are really really deep water specimens and that's one of the reasons why they're so valuable so that is very epic shell this one actually took me like eight or nine months to be able to purchase i purchased this one here um since i started shelling i saw these online and i just my mind was blown by the colorways that they had and you know their origin and that sort of thing they re they've always interested me. I've got three, four Zoilers in this case here. So two, three, four, we have a Marginata right there. They are very, very rare as well. So if you were to put this into a category of rarity, the easiest way to explain that would be saying this shell is worth about 200 uh, Australian dollars if you want to put the, put it into that sort of rarity as much as one can understand because there's no real chart on saying how rare a shell is but yeah it's pretty interesting and i love this and it took me a very long time to be able to get this so i would never ever ever sell it i love it very much it is very cool so i love friend i friend i let's move on to number seven i think number seven would be my cipre staphylase these little grape carry shells here. I have these pretty much around everywhere in this little uh, cabinet here. Majority of them being way at the front here. Some of the best. And some more along the side here. Oh, and even some more along here. So I have been considerably lucky with uh, finding these ones over the last couple of years. And yes, I know there isn't too many. There's about, what, nine... Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, about 30 of the uh, grape carries here. And that may not seem like a lot considering I've gone to the beach to find shells around 900 times. So 30 to 900, that's not really too many. But compared to something like the Limousinas or this mega urchin shells, it's quite a lot more. So, in saying that, these are my seventh favorite because, well, I, I bet you can guess it, because they look exactly like a Limousina carry, just a smaller version, which is really cool. And they look exactly the same, just smaller, and I'm able to find so many more of them. And each of them have such different colors. Like, look how dark and vibrant that one is right there. Whereas this one here is a lot lighter blue, which is incredible. This one's darker. This one's browner. And so on. It's really incredible to me. I remember, guys, I am filming these tiny shells with my iPhone, so it's very hard to keep the camera straight sometimes. Look how tiny those are. A closer look at some of the Staphylae shells right here. Incredible, especially that one right there. Look at that one. That's definitely one of my best ones. As well as that one. number eight is also in this top finds case here you could probably guess which one it's going to be of course this giant sea urchin shell here let me just grab it out so we can talk a bit more about it 
you guys are new to the channel as well, I just wanted to let you know 99% of these shells that I've found have been caught on camera. So if you want to see me find majority of these shells, check out some other YouTube videos on my channel. 99% of the time, the shell that I found will be in the thumbnail. So if you're keen to see me find any of these shells in particular, check out the thumbnails and find the shell that you want to see me find. Let's continue. So here we have the largest sea urchin shell I ever have found. Even one of the biggest I've ever seen. Now, unfortunately, it does have a huge hole on the bottom right here, but that is absolutely no problem at all because, as you can see, it sits perfectly. I found this giant sea urchin shell roughly about four months ago at my local beach, the same one I've been going to to find all these shells here, just in the end of the beach in some little rock pools. I actually found upside down buried in sand and I could only see about that much of the shell so I had no idea that when I turned it over it was gonna look like this. So as I mentioned previously I've gone to the beach roughly 900 times in the last three years and I've only ever found two of these giant urchin shells. Shows how rare they are right? Pretty incredible. And in fact that giant sea urchin shell is the same but it was actually found at a beach about 10 kilometers away in the same sort of tide pools, which is pretty incredible. This thing is huge. I wish I could put it at number three or four, but there's just so many shells in my collection and so many awesome finds of mine that it's really, really hard to number them like this. So I really hope you guys are enjoying the video and subscribe. Let's move on to, I believe, number eight. Number eight is my gifted Scaphella Genonia. I love Florida shells, Genonia shells, of course. One of the most sacred shells of Florida. Now this one was gifted to me by my good friends in Texas who also sent me a bunch of other rare shells just like this one. So if you guys are watching this, again, thank you so much. These will stay in my collection with me forever and they will most likely be passed down to my kids and then their kids. So this is one of my favorite shells ever. It is incredible. These are the must have in any seashell collection. I know I have a lot of people from Florida who watch my videos. So to any of you guys, I wish you luck in finding your own Genonia. Let's move straight on to the ninth shell. The shell would definitely be an Admiral Cone. Now, as you guys know, I love textile cone shells and basically any other shell with the textile-like pattern, like this shell here, this shell here, especially this shell here, so many more. This is my ninth favorite because its patterns are incredible. Super unique colors and just admiral. I've only ever found a tiny piece of this cone shell at my beach. I've seen one found in the last three years. So maybe my day is coming. It's definitely one of my top dream shell finds ever. Incredible. I could look at this one all day. Look how deep down those textile patterns go. Awesome. Let's move on to number 10. Number 10 would be this Oliva Porphyria olive shell. I bet you guys can tell why. This one here is in my top 10 for many, many reasons. Number one being because it was a gift from the same people who gifted me this Genonia here. Before they gifted it to me, I had been searching for many, many months to try and purchase one, but they were extremely hard to get because they are such 
a perfect looking seashell. Every collector on the planet needed one of these. So I have wanted this specific shell for a very, very long time. And do you know why? Because it has that textile pattern. But not only does it have that normal textile pattern, but it is an extremely vibrant and perfect pattern. Look at those mountains. Is that not incredible to you? And this one here is in extremely awesome condition. It's got a very, very nice tip. Its color is spot on. It looks like it's been waxed, but it is completely original. It's just incredible. It doesn't even look like an olive shell to me. It just looks like it's on a whole new level of insanity. Because this was a gift, this will also stay with me forever. That's going to do it for my top 20 favorite shell videos. We will continue the last 10 in a couple of days in a brand new YouTube video. So stay tuned for that. If you did enjoy this video, drop a like. And I will see you guys when we're at the beach next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.